Hello and welcome to Curing Nescience. Today, we're going to be making a generator that's powered by a bicycle. Alright, so before we get started on actually building this bicycle powered generator, I need to go over a relatively simple concept in physics regarding electricity and magnetism. So electricity and magnetism work perpendicular to one another, meaning if electricity is flowing this way, magnetism flows this way, and vice versa. If you have a magnetic force moving along um, a wire, a current will flow in the perpendicular direction, not opposite. So for example, an electric motor, this dotted line here represents an axis that this device here can spin on freely. So here is the contact with the electric current and this device here. They use what's called brushes. So it's, it contacts this um, conductive material here, but it doesn't have to stay rigid in one place. It can slide along the inside of the ring. And so the electric current comes in and travels along this device here, like so and the force it exerts magnetically goes perpendicular to it. And with these magnets in place already, the force would cause it to begin to rotate and start spinning. And I'm not sure if you're able to pick that up from this or understand what I'm trying to say, but that's kind of the basic rundown of how an electric motor works. So here's the electric motor we're going to be using for this bike. What we're going to do is we're going to attach this end to the back wheel of the tire and as it spins, it will generate an electric current or an electric flow coming through the wires. Did you see it? It shot up to 1.8 volts, I think. And that's the concept we're going to be utilizing here. We're going to attach this end here to the back tire using a belt, and then that's what will provide us our electricity. Okay, so here's our design. It's pretty simple, actually. We're going to raise the back tire up off the ground using a bike stand that I have to convert a bicycle into a stationary bike. You can make one yourself, and in fact, in the description down below, I'm going to post a link about a guy who did that, and it's way better than anything I could come up with, so props to him. The back tire will be up off the ground, allowing you to pedal it freely, and then the belt will go around the back tire and connect to the electric motor. Whenever we spin the electric motor, it will generate an electric current, which will flow into our charge controller. A little bit more on that later. It will go from the charge controller into a battery that we have, and then from the battery into an inverter that will convert our DC energy into AC, which is what you use for anything that you plug into the wall. Now, for our design, we're using this charge controller. What a charge controller does is it makes sure that if the voltage shoots up or shoots down, it won't damage the battery. In addition to that, it also makes sure that the battery it won't power the electric motor. Also, another side note, the battery itself. Some people think that's cheating, that you wouldn't be actually making an electricity generator because you were powering your inverter via the battery itself and not from you pedaling. Now, what I want to do with it is use it as a fail-safe almost. Say you, uh, you're powering something that you don't want to shut off. Uh, for example, a computer. A little foreshadowing there and you had to stop pedaling suddenly. If you stopped pedaling suddenly and it cut power to a computer instantly, that would be bad news for your computer. Yeah, I'm putting the battery in because I get tired and I don't wanna kill my computer when I test this thing later. More on that later. The replacement for the DS. Okay, so we have our design and you have your physics lesson. So let's build this thing. So right now what I'm gonna do is kind of build it on a small scale to make sure that my plan will actually work and that everything I have here functions properly.
So it's reading 12.7 volts from our battery. If I start to spin this, It's reading 0.3 volts from the motor while it's sitting. But whenever we start to spin it, see, we're up to 3.7, 4.3. It works. Now to test our inverter to make sure it works. Now let's see what happens when we hook our motor straight up to the inverter. I'm kind of curious. That's what we're trying to prevent from happening. That's what the charge controller prevents. It keeps the flow nice and steady for the light. It's like a sweet spot. And the charge controller regulates it for us so that we don't have to worry about it on the pedaling end. All right, so now let's build it for real. Yes. Okay, so we gotta take the back wheel off. And that's what I'm gonna do. And now you just put it back on. That'll work. All right, so this is a stationary trainer. You set it on the ground, you use these screws to tighten it on the back tire, the back axle here, and it lifts the tire up and allows you to pedal. The only reason I own one is because I knew I was gonna be doing this project and I saw it on Facebook Marketplace for like 20 bucks. Normally they're like 45 or 50 and it would be cheaper to build your own if this is the only thing you're gonna be using that for, unless you can find a good deal. So, there's that. So now you can spin the back tire and it won't move. I've got the belt on the tire. Now I just need to build something to mount the motor so that the belt's tight. And whenever we spin the back wheel, it spins the motor. So that's what I'm gonna do. So the plan is to slide the brace under this back part here so that the weight of the person on the bike will keep it down in place. Then we're gonna mount the motor like so, and the weight of the person is what will give us our tension required to keep the belt nice and taut. So I made some modifications to the brace here and I think it's gonna work out just fine. So I'm gonna mount the motor and we're gonna give it a test run. So now that we have that brace for the electric motor completed, I need to figure out how I'm going to mount all the electronics. I found this old toolbox that's been lying around and I haven't been using it. And it was pretty rusty on the inside, but I sprayed some rubberized coating on the inside to make sure that it wasn't conductive. And I think I'm just going to mount all the electronics in this so that it's relatively portable. So we'll see how that goes. Now to go from the electric motor to the electronics housing here, I'm going to use what's called a bullet. And it will allow me to connect and disconnect the motor from the toolbox, allowing it to be more mobile. So.
just got done painting our motor mount and I did some touch up painting on the electrics assembly as well because I was not too kind to it in the build process. But make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on because you're not gonna wanna miss it whenever we take this thing out and test it. We're gonna take it out into a park in the middle of the city and play video games on a real gaming PC. Only powered by the bike. It's gonna be hype. I'm so excited for this. So make sure you're subscribed so that you get to see it. Thank you for watching this episode of Curing Nessience. Hope to see you next time. Okay, love you, bye. Something, something fell into by mistake. Maybe some Patreon exclusive content, some ASMR. Chewing fruit snacks.